Hey, it's Ian from Las Vegas Scooters and Lips again. Today I'm going to review the new Jazzy Carbon. Okay, so here it is. Jersey Carbon. Very good. End of story. No, I'm joking. Yes, I had a fight with a lawnmower and I lost. So, had me a cut. It's been a while. But yeah, so that's the uh, box you're going to get it in when, uh, when you order one of these, if you order it online. So, obviously there's unpacking to do. So, I'll get it unpacked, put it all together and uh, see what this is really like oh here it is it's the uh, prime abilities jazzy carbon it's uh got obviously a quick look over it i'll go through some features of the chair and obviously it's the uh, carbon fiber giving you uh, great strength as well as uh, a great look, lightweight, with the uh, carbon fibre. Okay, so uh, as always, I had a quick look over the chair, assembled it. It's not too difficult out of the box, to be honest. You just got to put your joystick on whichever arm you wish you want it to be. Most most people will have it on uh, right-handed, but it uh, looks like you can change it to the left if you do wish. And obviously they've gone for lightweight as possible, as well as transportable. So it uh, it'll have a lithium-ion battery, and it, obviously its key feature is its uh, its carbon fiber design. The cool logo on the side there. I would say only 50% uh, of the chair is actually carbon fiber. Things like your foot plate your side uh, supports, the folding mechanism there. But still there is some metal frame on the chair itself like uh, which holds the footrest onto there, which also goes all the way to the back there. So there is some metal work on the chair, a little bit of a suspension spring there, and that's your controller. And uh, your backrest's also made of metal to give it a bit more rigidity. And you have the carbon fiber on the armrests and also your arm supports and that uh, little red button raises and lowers the the arms up so always starting from the top working our way down so uh, you have your joystick which i said you can swap it from left to right so if you're left-handed you can swap it over to the left or vice versa and it's just a a pull mechanism underneath the armrest just there you just unscrew that and then pull it out obviously watch your wiring make sure you uh, unplug your wiring just there here we just tighten that up to make sure that the wires don't separate and that locks that in place there you do have wire clips on down the side that do come off so you can swap it to the other side if you wish so these just pull off and clip on, but just be careful when you're transporting. Make sure you don't lose those, because they uh, they do come off quite easily. So backrest, nice soft fabric. The seat base is a little bit on the tough side, hard side. Has a non-slip uh, like effect to it. These little dots are like non-slip. So uh, maybe kind of hard for somebody to slide on and off but the backrest is nice nice little leather effect uh, piece of fabric there with their logo on it and also at the back there is the the prize logo across the back there with a little pouch for your necessities that you need to put in there and plenty of room for a book or a ipad or whatever you want to put in there so uh, so at least you've got some storage at the back, as well as you have underneath the uh, the chair, the seat itself, which I'll just take that off. You can see it has a carbon fiber base to it. 
so giving you a nice strong seat base but very thin and uh, lightweight but uh, at least you can take the seat to off to clean it if you need to and it just held on with velcro you know, a little lap belt there just to give you a bit of extra security just make sure that's pushed in place so you have a quick release lap belt there a bit like your backpack uh, locking mechanisms not like a proper seat belt but again lightweight most people don't use them but it's there if you need it yeah, the backrest is nice and soft by the feel of it, it's nice and plush. And like I showed you, both armrests do uh, lift up out of the way. I'll just retighten that joystick up. And uh, just by using the red button there. So you can lift them up out of the way if you need to. And that's where you would change the joystick from one side to the other, just screw it in there, take that cap off. And then it goes into that uh, carbon fibre there, armrest. Uh, so far, not so bad. So your joystick has all your usual controls. I'll just sit on it because it's going to be easier. So you can get a, an eye view. So you have your on button, horn button, slowest, fastest, and then just your usual joystick control. Also underneath the joystick you have, flip it up and make it easier. Your three pin uh, charging port and also a USB port there as well for charging your phone or other devices on the go. So there is that. It's a kind of new feature for power chairs. Underneath the seat you have another little storage power pouch there which is actually detachable via the press studs there. So if you do want to take it off and wash it, you can. If you spill a drink inside of it, it's uh, not too bad. You can always uh, unpop it with pop studs like that. And then clean it or whatever you need to do. And again, you, you've got, again, you've got your Pride logo just there as well. Underneath the seat is your battery pack, just located under there. So you talk 24 volt. 12 AH amp hour battery pack and there's a little button I don't know if you can see it just there and that's how you would release your uh, battery pack just a little button underneath and that releases it pulls out like that so you do have the symbols for airline friendly because it's underneath the uh, what hours of uh, what the FAA recommend and that gives you your 12 volt 12 AH just there for your battery pack so if you do transport this chair and you want to just charge the battery and not bring the chair in you also have a uh, charge port on the battery pack there so that's a good feature always like that there is a little handle there for carrying or pulling the battery in and out but I recommend you place the battery on the tray there and slide it once it's located slides in there's like two runners either side it will slide in so far but you have to use the release button to, to seat the battery and just pull the little lever underneath there there I don't know if you can see it there and that locates the back battery in its final position yeah little foot rest there again carbon fiber it's a nice feature it's, uh, if you can see the, the weave of the carbon fiber, that raises up and when you fold the chair there is actually a little strap that you uh, wrap around this portion here to lock the chair when you're transporting it. That's what these uh, two little pieces of fabric are there, I'll show you that when I fold it. So, on the front, you have these little springs here for a little bit of suspension, as well as your red reflectors, just so uh, people can see you with it being black. If you're out and about at night, at least they've got a bit of a reflection there. So, so, you've got a bit of suspension on the front wheels. There's your drive wheels at the back, 
along with your, your Jazzy logo and the carbon fibre strut there for the folding mechanism down to the motors. So two individual motors as a wheelchairs as well as your anti-tip wheels, one either side below the motors, protect the motors as well as anti-tipping. Like I said, that's your controller or your wiring and this is your release handle for when you want to fold fold the uh, power chair down. Looks like they have two suspension springs for the rear, just to give you a little bit of comfort. Back to your motors, two reflectors again at the back there, as well as your, your brake freewheel levers. Pull them towards you to freewheel the scooter or power wheelchair in this case. And then push them forward to lock. There is actually a symbol on the side of the motors just there and just there. So you know which direction to put your motors in case you need to freewheel it. On the back backrest portion there's a nice uh, spongy handle there for anybody who wants to push you around if you need to. So if you put them in freewheel you've got a nice handhold there and push the power chair around. This side's pretty much the same as the other except you've obviously got this wire there and uh, the release button there for the armrest and that just swings out of the way nice bit of carbon fibre there and that just clicks into position easy to operate, easy to fold, easy to uh, transport that's what uh, Pride are going for with this uh, Jazzy Carbon I think they're calling it the travel light so release mechanism at the back here this is how you would fold the chair so I'll kind of put it in this position so you can see a bit better. But, uh, you would first release this handle by pulling it towards you if you stood at the back of the chair and then push forward on the back of the chair and it folds the concertinas down just like that. So then you, you would, uh, from this frame portion, just lift the chair up just so it stands up. Just be careful it doesn't fall. And like I showed earlier, they have this little strap here for the footrest. Just goes around the bottom of the footrest. Once this is folded up, of course, and that secures the footrest in place as well as keeps the frame together. So to unfold and fold the scooter or power wheelchair in this case, you don't need to do anything to the armrest. There's a little handle at the back here, which I did explain earlier. You just pull that towards you. And then Jenny's going to show you just fold the chair down like so. And then try and steady it from the back and grab it from the front frame there. And just stand it up a little bit like that so it's on its uh, anti-tip wheels. And then fold your uh, footrest in place against the frame there. And this is the little strap that you just wrap around your footrest there just to hold it in place. And that also locks the frame in place so it won't unfold on you. And I find it's easier, like I said, lifting from there and there. That way you could lift it into the trunk. But make sure your brakes are off on your wheels so that way it'll roll into the vehicle. But you would grab it from those two frame pieces and lift up and maybe drop it into the car that way. It's not too heavy, but uh, that's a good lift in place it's just there either side. And that way you can put it in the car and once your brakes are off. And that way you can roll it into an SUV like so. And just tilt your wheels down so it folds nice and flat to the floor. And then to unfold it, pop it back on its uh, anti-tip wheels. Undo your strap. And then grab your seat base. And then pull the chair back and the seat base together and that rear handle clicks in place there. Make sure that is clicked in place otherwise it will want to fold up on you. Make sure you hear this audible click there. Pop your brakes back on, turn your power on and you're ready to roll. So with the power on, you have, there we go beep saying it's active and there's your uh, power indicator showing how much battery life you have 
any speed, slowest, and all the way to fastest. And then your little horn, just there. So the weight capacity on this chair is a healthy 300 pounds. So it covers a diverse uh, array of people. But uh, I would recommend you would try one out, make sure that uh, you actually fit into the chair because of the gap between either side there. So definitely try one out if you can, or take the measurements from uh, online. Look at uh, Pride's website under Jazzy Carbon under their power wheelchair section. The standard seat size on this chair is 17 inch by 17 inch. So that will give you an idea of uh, what size it is. But I'll sit in it and give it a spin around the showroom just to let you know what it's like with my girth in it. And, uh, so yeah, 300 pound weight capacity. And top speed is 3.7 miles an hour, which is pretty average for these uh, power, power wheelchairs. So uh, rear drive motor. And uh, you look at um, 250 watt uh, brushless motors, so there's no brushes in there to sort of wear away. So it's about a motor design. The range per charge, so uh, what you're looking to get out of the chair is going to be about 9.3 miles, but that obviously will change for a heavier person or different kind of terrains if you're going up a lot of steep hills or the, the mileage range will actually go down and that's to be expected. Now the total weight of the chair and that's with the battery included on the power chair is going to be 43.6 pounds. The battery only weighs four pounds so the base without the battery would be about 39 and a half pounds. 39.6 pounds so it's uh, still in its heavyish class. It's not too heavy, but uh, I find it easy to lift, but I'm kind of able to do it. Somebody who has lifting problems may need somebody to help just to uh, get it in and out of a car. So really, there's not a lot to these uh, power chairs, to be honest. There's just the odd features on it that I've just showed you, like the seat valve, the seat. The carbon fibre, obviously, that's the big thing they're going for, is light and uh, robust. It's kind of cool, nice uh, the carbon fibre. We've shown through on the uh, on the frame pieces there, as well as the RMS. So something different. Probably like to be different. And uh, I do know that Golden have also released a carbon fibre version of their power chair. I think they call it something like the Nutcracker or the Cricket, I think it's called. I don't know what cricket's got to do with carbon fibre, but I guess they have to think of some name. But yeah, so uh, yeah, we knew about this prior prior to them releasing it at uh, Medtrade, which was in Georgia this year in October, I believe. But, uh, so we got one in, a customer ordered one of these actually, so uh, we're lucky to have this in. I can now give it a little bit of a test drive see how it performs against other wheelchairs. So, uh, sit my big butt down. Oh, I've got plenty of room. So, plenty of room left and right in the seat. It's not sort of catching on, on me at all. It's not catching my sides, so it's very comfortable. I was expecting the seat to be a bit harder. It is a little bit hard on the seat cushion. Feels like a gel or a memory foam base. Seat back's okay. There's a little bit of give in the chair. But, uh, my big boat's on this uh, little footrest. If I want to put my feet there, they're really hanging off the end. So, And it does flex quite a little bit there. But I'm up in the uh, 225 range. 5 foot 9 as always. I'm probably a bit lighter now I've had my hair cut, but... But yeah, my feet, I'd definitely recommend somebody put that have got big feet like me put them on this uh, against this back bar. But it may it may uh, irritate you after a bit, but uh, I wouldn't recommend putting your feet right out like that. You're susceptible to catching your feet on something, so definitely put my feet inside closer towards the chair, so I'm uh, seated a bit better. But uh, 
So yeah, normal controls for a joystick, joystick left, right, forward, back, as well as diagonal, left and right. So, and there's your speed setting like I showed you. I'll start off with the slowest. Horn's a little bit louder than normal, but not by much. It's not uh, like your train horns on, on some trucks. But uh, yeah, so to operate the chair, just as normal as any other power chair, you just face it to the right and it spins to the right, 360 degrees. To back up a little. There is that annoying reverse beep. I'm sure your dealer may be able to get rid of that for you, but it's a safety feature just for other pedestrians knowing that you're actually going backwards and you don't uh, run them over. But yeah, just a full turn 360 and again the other way. You can tell it's a brushless motor, you can feel it uh, has like a, a grinding start in the motor, but once it's going, it's uh, it's uh, pretty smooth. So, so yeah, forward as well. It's also a, like a feathered throttle, whereas uh, the harder you push forward at set speed, it will go faster at that speed, but you can actually slow the chair down by not pushing forward so much. So you can actually crawl at even slower speeds. That's your full, full speed for the setting slows you down for the corners and then speeds up a bit like the ZT8 and ZT10 as you get to a corner it senses that uh, you're actually turning and it slows you down and then picks speed up again now, I'd expect this to be a little bit slower in its number one speed it is actually quite fast so at full sort of like forward on the joystick at, the very slow speed it's kind of fast I'm finding that uh, I'm catching the back wheel on my lift that I've got in the store so I've got to get used to the width of the back of the chair so I keep catching the uh, that lift that's just there so as I go around this corner I'll try and show you what I'm doing I'm catching that back wheel I'm not going for it there we go I've cleared it not going to do much damage to the tyre to be honest it's on a flat piece of ground so but yeah that's your first setting on your first speed and again you can change your speed on the move so when you're in second second speed setting a little bit faster just make sure i clear that to does go a little bit quicker in second to speed go a bit faster third it's normally when you're going just straight on it will speed up and you hear it slow down when you so obviously reverse is a lot slower than forward would be so I'm gonna go full speed now See what the 3.7 miles an hour is really like. Let's go the opposite way because I'm getting dizzy. So it's a slowish start and then it starts to pick up speed. Yeah, I would definitely, if you're indoors, definitely not put it on high speed. Because once you get that joystick centered and it picks up the speed. It's got to be perfectly centered on these joysticks for it to be full speed on the full speed setting. A little bit of noise from the uh, motors, but nothing excessive, just as normal. Just bring you to a nice slow stop. And that's your full turning circle there, so great for indoors, great for tight spaces and corridors and things like that so great for that sort of scenario great for travel lightweight uh, it's not going to be as light as some of the uh, lightweight manual wheelchairs but at least you've got your own independence with the power of this uh, power chair so yeah overall it's pretty comfortable i'm not sure what it'll be like on the side work sidewalk cracks you know the control joints as they call them not sure what it'll be like on there. Hopefully the suspension would make it a bit more comfortable, but that 
So you just go to doctors, hospitals, casinos, somewhere where you need to transport the chair just to get around and do your daily day daily uh, day to day business. So yeah. It's good control, isn't it? It's not snappy at all. I find some of these wheelchairs with the uh that have the caster wheels at the front and the back, mainly at the back ones, they tend to be very snappy when you turn. Especially if you change direction like forward or reverse and then turn, you feel it snap. You feel it like go left and right really quickly as the wheels try and straighten out. But this is very smooth. It's uh, pretty good actually for a, for a lightweight to uh, travel chair. I don't know if this is going to replace the uh, Passport, the Jazzy Passport. I know they've uh, they started with the Silver Passport and then they went to black. And then they released this one, so I guess they're trying to get it lighter and lighter as possible. Yeah, so there's your Jazzy Carbon, the Travel Light, new from Pride, just been released. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video, hope it's given you an insight to the power chair. So, uh, yeah, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. It helps us out immensely. Subscribe, of course. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments, and uh, we'll help uh, as much as we can. Yeah, so there's your Jazzy Carbon. Thanks for watching. Bye now.